What's up everybody and thank you for joining me for another video. My name is Wack4863, but you can call me Wack. In today's video I want to go over the update patch 1.1 to Cyberpunk 2077. And this came out yesterday and I've had a little bit of time to test it across three different systems. So the systems that I tested it on were my PC, the PS5, and the PS4 Pro. And the footage that you're going to be watching today is from the PS4 Pro. Now, I did not test on the original PS4, so the results on that may vary, but I was able to test on the PS4 Pro. And I think that that generation of console is where CD Projekt Red has the most work. So that's why I chose to show that footage today to see the gameplay footage prior to update 1.1 and the gameplay footage post update 1.1. And they definitely still have have a lot of work to be done and I'll highlight some different things that are going on on PS4 still that are going to annoy you. So let's jump into the patch notes real quick and the first thing that I want to say is I'm not going to go line by line here but I'm going to cover the basics of what's going on. So in this update we focused on various stability improvements which you can find outlined in the patch notes below. We will continue to work on patch 1.2 and other upcoming updates. At the same time we will keep fixing the bugs you encounter and listening to your feedback on how to improve the overall game play experience. Looking at the stability section, they talk about the memory usage improvements in various systems within the game, characters, interactions, navigation, in-game videos, news, TV, etc., foliage, laser effects, minimap devices, AI, street traffic, environmental damage system, GPU related, and more. And I'm going to stop right there and jump on CD Projekt Red a little bit because and more should never be in your stability fixes or in your patch notes in general. You need to put it all out there. There should not be a and more as an explanation of something that you fixed in game. Moving on in the patch notes, various crash fixes related to, among others, loading saves, game opening slash closing, and point of no return. Quests and open world. So basically this entire list is issues that people have come across in different missions where they've stopped it just basically halts them from being able to move forward with that mission so all these fixes are really really good ui fixes fixed an issue where the prompt for exiting brain dances could be missing that's a good thing because i know when i initially started playing i was stuck in one and had to reload to get out of it i haven't had that issue since then and that was right when the game launched but it's a good thing to be able to exit those removed an invalid item from loot and again i really want to stress to cd project red be specific and let us know what that invalid item is and this is really important for a player such as myself because if i've got that item in my inventory and then all of a sudden i don't have that item it's going to send up red flags for me i'm going to submit bug reports and that's just going to cause more work. So be specific about what items you're removing from the game. I'm going to skip over visual and achievements and skip right down to miscellaneous. Address the issue responsible for saves getting oversized related to the modifier indicating if the item is crafted and trimmed the excess size from already existing saves. Note, this won't fix PC save files corrupted before update 1.06. Now it's good to see them still working on this issue and solving that problem. It'll be interesting to see if at any point in time they solve the issue with the corrupted files, if they're ever able to go back and fix those files or if those are gone for good. Now I'm going to skip down to the specific categories. We'll start with a PlayStation specific Performance optimization of crowds on PS4 Pro and PS5, various crash fixes on PlayStation 4. Now I told you guys earlier on in the video that I did test on PlayStation 4 and I did test on PlayStation 5. On the PlayStation 5, prior to this update, I was getting a crash about 
every hour. But since update 1.1, I have not experienced a crash. And when I say a crash, I mean it actually sends me back to the dashboard on the PS5 or the PS4. And I didn't experience a crash on either one. And I totaled probably around five hours of gameplay between the two of them. So I think that's a big win in this category. They've fixed some things to where you are not crashing as much, at least on PlayStation 4 and obviously PlayStation 5 because of the backwards compatibility. But that is definitely a step in the right direction. I know prior to this patch when I was trying to play on either one of the systems, I had a really hard time staying engaged with the game and the story because every hour or so, like clockwork, it would crash me back to the dashboard and I would have to start over from whatever spot it had saved prior to the crash. Moving down to Xbox specific, Improved memory usage for character creation, mirror scanning, camera, remote control, menus, inventory map on Xbox One, Xbox One X, Xbox One S, all the different Xboxes that you can think of, that's what they did. I don't have anything to comment on for the Xbox because I personally don't own any, but you can leave your experience in the comment section below and share that with everyone else. Moving down to PC specific, the first one on there is it will now be possible to obtain achievements while Steam is offline. Note offline mode needs to be enabled before starting the game. This change does not work retroactively. Address the game startup crashes related to loading cache on NVIDIA graphic cards. I run a NVIDIA graphic card. I never ran across this issue, but uh, I'm sure some people did, so that's in there as well. And then down to Stadia specific, concert audio should no longer be inaudible in one of the missions. Fix corrupted textures on several melee weapons, tweak default dead zone settings to be more responsive. Note the change will not affect settings unless they are set to default. Now I'm not at all surprised by these patch notes. I feel like this is exactly the direction that CDPR was going to take and probably needed to take. I know there's a lot of people in the community that thought we were going to get fixes for a lot of the glitches and a lot of the exploits that were in the game. However, this is a single player game, so fixes for glitches and exploits really don't harm anyone else. So eventually those will come, but I think it's good that CD Projekt Red really focused on things that were going to stop gameplay for some people. So the glitches that would send you out of the game that would make you dashboard, the things that would halt you in a mission, all those different things are very important for them to get fixed first. Now, if this was a multiplayer game, be totally different. Those big exploits would need to be attacked and handled right away. However, since it's a single player game, it's really not hurting anyone else. If you're duplicating your items or if you're doing the infinite money glitch, that's something that's just on your save file and likely that that will never be something that can go into a multiplayer mode once they launch that. So I'm not surprised that they took this approach. Something that I definitely found interesting about patch 1.1 is the different size files for this update on the different systems. So on my PC, the file was 1.1 gigabyte. On my PS4, the file was 19 gigabyte. And then on my PS5, the file was 16.84 or 17 gigabyte. Now I mentioned exploit fixes earlier, but I want to revisit that real quick because it could be an exploit, it could be a feature, or it could have just been bad coding. But when you are looking at legendary weapons, since update 1.1, you're no longer going to be able to roll those weapons for different stats or roll those weapons for a different amount of mod slots. That is no longer in game, you can't do that. And it's not in the patch notes either, so it may be a side effect of something else that they fixed, or that may be part of the and more that I was talking about earlier. All in all, sometimes things do slip through the cracks, but I really want to stress again, these patch notes really need to be in depth. 
Now let's jump into some of the things that I noticed post update 1.1 on the PS4. The first thing that you're going to want to watch for is the NPCs. And I pass this particular lady multiple times while I'm walking down this hallway. Additionally, I want you to see when I heal here, right about here, I'm going to heal. And then a couple of seconds later, I actually get the animation of the healing, even though the healing process did start prior to the animation happening. But this lady, like she's quadruple or something like that I passed her four or five times on this walkway and I think there's one more of her that I pass down here a little bit later on now that's not a huge deal it's not a game breaker there she is the last one that I passed now, while that's not a game breaker or anything like that, it will take you out of the immersion of the game, especially when there's just that single NPC that you're passing and it's the exact same one over and over and over again. Now I'm going to take you back to when I was approaching Lizzie's bar in the gameplay footage. You can see that NPCs are not fully rendering in. Additionally, she should have a bat in her hand that is not rendered in. You'll see that pop in here shortly, but that is happening across different NPCs in Cyberpunk 2077 on the PS4 Pro. Additionally, when I go inside, Mateo doesn't render in properly. Now these are the first two that I've come across that aren't rendering in properly in the game. I also came across a rather interesting experience with my car. So as you can see, there's nothing on the road there. Nowhere around is there anything on the road. And when I call my car, there it is. It's going to pop up behind me. You can see it actually spawned inside another van. And as I approach the vehicle, boom, it pops out. So that is still an issue going on. And I've seen this a little bit on PC as well, but I feel like this is more prominently happening on the console version of the game specifically the ps4 pro and likely the ps4 as well now let's get into a little bit of combat and this is where things just kind of chug along honestly watch how slowly things react to me so as i walk up throw a couple of grenades nobody notices anything they didn't notice that i threw grenades they weren't alerted by me any of that i was able to kill them before they even knew i was there now we have this whole car here and I'm just going to start throwing grenades. Now, not all these grenades are going to blow that car up, but these guys just fail to even get out of the car before I end up blowing this car up. So that's the kind of thing that you are going to run in if you're running this game on PS4. And I'll give you another example here. And what I feel like is happening is the processes just are not happening fast enough. So you get to the area, the NPC's there. You can see he's, he doesn't even see me before I attack. He hasn't pulled his weapon out. I've already got him killed. This guy does and does actually attack me. But look at this guy. He These two haven't even done anything. I throw a grenade. There's no response. It's like, oh, look, a toy. And it just doesn't feel like the game can keep up with how quickly I'm moving through and attacking things. And I'm really kind of playing delicate. I'm really not moving as fast as I would be if I was playing on my PC. Additionally, at some points in times, the animations, my character animations, wouldn't even line up with what's going on on the screen. So you can see she's dead, and then there we go. We have the animation for the chop down and then the swipe. And I think it happens multiple times here. Let's see if it happens one more time with this guy. Oh, well, that time it was lined up, but let's go back to that first time again. Now I'm going to slow this clip down so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So as I walk up, I do the a chop down strike and I'm going to do a, a second chop down strike. Here we go. Here's the second chop down strike. She's actually already dead from the first one. You can see the indicator came up. And then as I turn around to the other guy, I actually do the full animation. And this actually happened to me quite a bit. It wasn't like I ran across one instance where that happened. I mean, look at this guy just floating away from me, not knowing what exactly happened. There he's finally dead, and there is the animation again. Let's see if we can pull it off again. I feel like the game just isn't keeping up with what's actually happening. There was a couple where it actually worked, but it's like it's not processing it properly or fast enough to understand what the movements or what the animations actually should be. 
Now, if this was an online game, I'd be talking about lag, I'd be talking about internet quality, all those different things. It's not online, it's just the way it plays on PS4. And again, this is PS4 Pro. So likely that the standard edition PS4 is actually going to be worse than this gameplay. Now, I don't know if you guys noticed it or not when I was playing the video earlier, but you can see we have the family of Empire on the screen, and it's consistently on the screen until I look at something else. Now, this is something that happens on PC as well as PS4. I've seen this across both, and it's really annoying. I hope they can fix that very, very soon. Now, the last thing that I want to get into is a couple of things with driving. First of all, if you have a third person view normally selected when you're driving and it doesn't automatically change to that first person view, you need to sit and wait a couple of seconds and wait for it to change to that third person view. If you do not, you're going to have to stop. You're going to have to likely get off or get out of your car, get off of your motorcycle, get out of your car in order to get it to change from the first person view to the third person view. It does take a period of time, but if you just take off on whatever vehicle you're driving, it is not going to change while you're driving. At least for me, it would not change even though I had the third person view and perspective selected if I didn't wait for that animation to actually happen and I started driving, that animation wouldn't happen where it comes out of the car or off the motorcycle out of first person view into third person view. Now, the driving, driving through the night city, it does feel a lot better. It feels like you are not skipping all over the place like you used to be. However, you are definitely gonna see a lot more grain on the PS4 and the consoles, probably all the consoles. I keep saying PS4 just because that's all I was able to test on, but likely that you're going to have this exact same issue on Xbox, maybe even Stadia, I'm not sure how it runs on Stadia. The biggest thing I noticed was the graininess of the ground and the buildings as I was driving by. Again, not a deal breaker and definitely a lot better than the way the driving was before when you just all of a sudden started flying off the road and doing barrel rolls in this sky. I was not able to force the game to do that after update 1.1. So all in all, and at the end of the day, in conclusion, I still can't recommend this game on PS4, PS4 Pro. PS5, it seems to do a lot better. So if you've got a PS5, definitely you can consider picking it up and you will likely have a good gameplay experience. Obviously, PC, if you've got a rocking PC, no problems with Cyberpunk 2077 for the most part. There's little things here and there, but nothing that's going to break your gameplay for the most part. I do feel like we are making improvements. I feel like update 1.1 definitely made some improvements. They still have a lot of work to do to get it stabilized on console in general. I feel like definitely on the older gen console, they definitely have a lot of work to put together to get that to a point where, say, maybe PlayStation Store starts selling Cyberpunk 2077 again. But as for my recommendation right now, I'm gonna tell you, hurry up and wait wait and see what more patches and more fixes do to the game before deciding to spend your hard-earned money on it because I feel like right now even with the improvements it's still not at a point where you're going to have a really good gameplay experience. Now I'm definitely going to continue to follow the updates and the developments for Cyberpunk 2077. So if you are interested in seeing more videos like this where I kind of dive in and see what's changed and give you my opinion on whether you should pick it up on console at that point in time or not, go ahead and click that subscribe button, click that bell so you get notified when I upload another video. And I want to hear from you what is your gameplay experience with Cyberpunk 2077. Is it good? Is it bad? Or is it ugly you can leave that in the comment section below the whack moments in this video were sponsored by my legendary supporters if you'd like to become a member you can click the button below that says join that'll give you all the details and if you want to continue the fun there's two videos on the screen you can pick one of those to watch next please don't forget to whack the like button and if you're new to the channel i'd encourage you to click that subscribe button click that bell so you get notified when i upload another video